How's it going folks and welcome back to Park to Prem. Today is the end of season two, the first full season in charge and we're in the playoff spot but we probably need to win our last two games to stay in the playoff spot and the last game of the season is against the team currently in third. There's teams queuing up to take our spot. We've got to be good today. So without further ado, let, let's get into this. I am nervous. Welcome back to Park to Prem. This is the end of season two, as we've already mentioned. I thought today we'd start on my manager profile, just so you can see how things are going. I've not been able to go on any coaching courses because the club can't afford it, uh, but we have naturally improved a little bit as a manager over the years. You can see here how my attributes are looking at this moment in time. They're definitely better than they were right at the very, very beginning. I feel like coaching attributes naturally go up over time, whereas some of these mental attributes kind of go up based on what you do. So, for example, determination helps with stuff like board requests. So if you have a few successful board requests, I feel like your determination goes up. Equally, if you do good team talks, your motivating goes up. I don't actually know if that is the case. If anyone knows the inner workings of these things, please do let me know them. But yeah, the, the headline really here is, I am getting better. I'm slightly concerned because my contract at Free Bridges is up at the end of the year. And right now they don't want to give me a new contract. Uh, probably because the club's financially insecure, we're over the wage budget. And that's a very big red number for the overall balance. Now, since you were last here, we have played six games in the league. And it's not been perfect, but it has been a good enough run of form to see us climb into the playoff spots, as I've already mentioned. It's very, very close at the top today. Our two remaining games are against Carl Charlton Athletic, who are in 12th, and Eastbourne Town, who are in 3rd. Um, both potentially must-win games. Even if we win only one of these, that might be not enough to get us into the playoffs come the end of the year. And well, to quickly talk about the game since we were last here, we've done quite well on the whole. And we ended up drawing, as you can see here, 2-2 against Sheppey United, a team going very strong towards the top of the table. Wish I could say this is a great result. It probably would have been had it not been for the fact we were two goals up in this game and they equalised in the 86th minute. The only silver lining really being that Gallimore has continued to be in good form. He got two in this game, outperforming his XG, looking very solid. Um, but yeah, his two goals, not enough here. So off the back of that result, we got three successive 1-0 wins. Finally getting some clean sheets, but the goal slowed down just a little bit. The first was against East Grinstead Town. They had a sending off early on. We had a number of goals ruled out for offside. A little bit disappointing that we couldn't beat them by more, but a win is a win. We went on to beat Hearn Bay 1-0, and then in the very next game, we took on Hyfe Town, the team that we bottled it quite legendarily against when we lost 3-2 against them. In this game, we won the game 1-0. Wasn't really a classic. They were perhaps the better team. Edwards, though, Man of the match performance. He got an 8.3, I think it was, in that game against Hive Town. An 8.4, in fact. And the game before that, he got an 8.0. Both these games, he got man of the match. He has been absolutely incredible. Apparently, he's unhappy with the standard of goalkeeping coaching. Just as a reminder, he's the goalkeeper coach. Tell me how I'm meant to fix that. Seriously, I don't have an... Uh, what does he want me to do? You are the coach. Get better. The penultimate game since we last year, we took on the team running away with a title at the top of the table. Burgess Hill, they've won the league. They're a very good team. We lost this one 4-1. We actually had the better XG in the game. And uh, I, I just feel a bit sad. I'll be honest, I feel like we were a tad unfortunate in this one. 4-1 certainly flattered them, but they are top of the table for a reason. They took their chances. At the end of the day, they were just better than us. And most recently, we took on Cray Valley Paper Mills. In this one, we won 2-1. A good little result and a result that saw us return into the top four, where as you can see, VCD Athletic, who we lost to last time, have gone on a good little run of form. They're currently in fifth. Now, it is worth noting that the playoffs in this league are single-legged games. Yeah, that's right. Next episode, if we get to the playoffs, will probably just be the semi-final and then the final if we get there. There's no two legs. There's no away goals. There's no nonsense. Makes it more nerve-wracking and what feels like a little bit more random. But we've got to be in it to win it. As you can see, Burgess Hill have just pulled away at the top of the table, but we're in some good form. Today, we need to try and seal the deal. We have had our youth intake since we last year, and whilst it does have a whole list of elite talent listed up here and players with crazy potential, the reality is that none of them are as good as the scouts think they are, and that this potential is just a bit of a red herring, really. The, perhaps the most notable of the players is this guy, Lee byung Kwan. He is a South Korean youngster. I don't know why we've got a South Korean youngster 
in our youth intake. It feels a little bit random. I'm not going to complain about it very much. I mean, maybe he was born in Yasan and then moved to Three Bridges in West Sussex. I mean, that's a logical, you know, life choice move. Either way, he's our best uh, player. We have got a couple of Irish players. And by a couple of Irish players, I mean, we've got four Irish players in our intake too. Um, I think the second best player, if I was going to really label someone as the second best, would be Kwebena Agumon, who has a fantastic name. Um, going to be honest, not a particularly good goalkeeper. But you know what? He's 16. He's got time to improve on his two anticipation, three decisions for concentration and free positioning. Those are all going to need to improve quite a bit for him ever to feature in our first team. Just before we get into the game, one other little bit of news. Jones here has been attracting a little bit of interest. I had Wrexham come in with an inquiry. I told them to give me £250,000 and they told me to do one. I'd be very interested to know how much you would sell this guy for. He's already agreed to sign a senior deal at the end of the year to the end of 2024. But ultimately, he's 16 years old. He's got lots of potential. He's played very, very well for us this year. Has improved a lot. And that is something that I was not really expecting. Obviously, with our suboptimal uh, kind of facilities, not the best coaching, it's difficult to actually develop players at this kind of level. He has improved. He's attracting some interest. His value is still set at zero pounds. So a lot of teams just keep bidding zero for him. I feel like if he could be the man to get me out of debt, that would be great. Um, as you might have noticed, right now the interest is all cool. So maybe I'm just expecting too much with 250,000. But at the same time, he's an integral part of our team. And I don't really want to lose Jones. He's playing very well at the moment. So in terms of our team for this end of season running, no injuries, no suspensions. It's a full strength squad, which is always great to see. Um, in terms of the squad itself, I mean, this is the team that we've largely been settling on. There's been a little bit of rotation here and there, really just in the fullback areas. The centre-backs of Barnett and Blackham have been just nailed down for the last kind of few months, really. Carl Barnett, of course, in on loan from Halmwell Town. I would really like to sign this guy permanently, if possible. He's had a really, really good year for us in on loan. Um... Whether or not we can sign him permanently remains to be seen. Uh, elsewhere, Thompson, who's also in on loan, I've looked at the possibility of buying. He, he doesn't want to sign for me permanently. And unfortunately, his contra contract at Nuneatonbury is currently expiring at the end of the year. So even if I did want to try and loan him again, I can't loan him from them because he's not contracted to them for next year. So he might be a player we're worrying about replacing next time out. Of course, up front, we've got Gallimore, Dowdy, Gaylor. They've just been the go-to trio up top. Similarly, to be fair, Artemi, Jones and Thompson has become the, the midfield trio of choice as well. Um, it's not really been an area where I've rotated all that much because we've not needed to. The fixtures have been spread out and generally speaking, fitness has not been an issue. Um, Braithwaite is going to come in at right back. The Barbadian youngster has been slightly more frequently featuring, I feel like, at right wing back as of late. I've kind of gone through a Braithwaite phase right now. And out on the left-hand side, we've got Tommy Barrell, who of course is on loan from Oldershot Town, another player whose loan I would like to extend going into next year if possible. But anyway, today's first game is perhaps the most winnable of the two. We take on Carl Charlton. If we win this and results elsewhere go in our favour, theoretically we could lock down a playoff spot with one game to spare. What I would then look to use that last playoff game for really, or the last game of the season before the playoffs, would be just to try and build up some confidence, try and build up a little bit of momentum, particularly as Eastbourne Townley were taking on could end up being a team that we play in the playoffs come the end of the year. But anyway, we've got to focus on the task here and now. They're lining up with a 5-4-1. Going to be very interested to see how that lines up against our team. As, uh, well, seven minutes into things, we are off to an early highlight. Thompson to Dowdy, who uh, has calmed down a little bit, Dowdy. He was on fire recently with his form, but the last kind of month or so, he's, he's gone a, a little bit cooler. I feel like that's been the, a general trend with the team. So if we could get off to a fiery start here get some momentum going for this tail end of the year and a potential playoff run, that would be great. Unfortunately, the goal that I was very, very happy about has been ruled offside. That looked very marginal there. I mean, it's a good header by Gallimore. Shame. It's going to count for nothing. I've just noticed it's raining again in Free Bridges. I feel like this is a meme at this point. Every one of our home games we play in the rain. I, I don't even feel like I'm making that up. It, it Genuinely, it just always rains in Free Bridges. Anyway, this is really nice. Dowdy, oh my word. I mean, Gayla probably scores from there. Dowdy hits it just wide. The build-up play was nice. The long shot, not far wide. Half an hour into this game, we've been in largely kind of control, really. They have created a real lack of chances so far, but we've not found the breakthrough despite having 58% of possession. But maybe, just maybe, we can make something happen here. Dowdy to Braithwaite, who already had one assist ruled out for offside. He might get one here. He's not going to be given the assist, but he was a big part of that goal and it wasn't that dissimilar 
to the disallowed goal, really. A cross from our right back, and this time it was Gallimore with the finish. First time, hit the woodwork, but he was alive and alert to the rebound. He took it away. The keeper's on the floor crying. He had no chance. Defence didn't help him out. We take a deserved lead. Coming up to the end of the first half here, we've been in kind of complete control, to be honest. Uh, we deserve our lead at the very least. We've been the, the, the better team. I feel like two or three probably wouldn't flatter us. If we can keep doing this here, we're going to be in a really good spot. As things stand, we are currently in the playoffs. We're currently in third place as well. And because of how other results are going, we could qualify for the playoffs off this game here. Of course, it's kind of out of our hands here as Barnett hits the header against the crossbar from the corner. Thought their 4 5 1 might cause us some issues in the midfield, but actually, we've been dominating the play and kind of circumventing the big strength in their team and the wide players by just working it through the middle just like this. And then Dowdy, I mean, he's got to score those. If he's missing those in the playoff final, I'm going to be livid. 25 minutes left here, straight into another highlight. It remains 1 0, and I don't know what that pass was by them or by us. Why are none of our players running to the ball? Please tell me. Oh, it's at. What have I just went? What are we doing? What are we doing? If they now score, oh my, I thought that. If that goes in, I don't know. I just walk away from the keyboard. In this game, Barrel's not had a great game at left back, so I'm going to bring in Brandon O'Neill. Elsewhere, Jones on a booking scares me, so we'll bring in KJ Osu. We'll hold on to our last sub for now. We're 20 minutes left in this game. We've been rampant, is probably the, the most polite way of phrasing it. We've been all over them. But with 15 minutes left, they are still within touching distance. And while well, they've crafted out one chance, they could craft out another here. Dell hits it. Edwards just extends a huge right arm to it and tips it over. Doing what he's done for us consistently since he joined us back in November. Might still have a corner to deal with here, though, as Stokes, well, might have got his head on it. But for Edwards, coming out and plucking that ball out the air. 13 minutes left here. This has been... A weird game. I feel like we've been in charge for large spells of it, but they're still in touching distance. But for how long? Well, it might not be much longer because we have a chance here. Dowdy set up by Gallimore. The two strikers linking up superbly. Dowdy with a really, really nice finish. Makes it 2-0 with 12 minutes left. That should put us beyond reach. And I've not seen the latest scores elsewhere. That might be the goal that secures us a playoff spot. I thought when Gallimore ran wide here, he maybe limited his opportunities to get away a shot. But in the end, he knew what he was doing. He was turning provider... Dowdy was the only man in the middle there to pick out, but he picked him out well. And uh, yeah, I've not been impressed really by Carl Charlton. They've had a few chances here and there, but their XG is not very good. We've been in control. We're going to win this game here. Unfortunately, because of how other results have gone, we still might need a result on the final day of the year. Do not get complacent and think that's playoffs football secured. It's absolutely not. And knowing that we're taking on Eastbourne Town who are currently ahead of us in the league, that does scare me a little bit. Hearn Bay, the only team who can catch us, but if they were to win and we lose and Sheppy United win, we would miss out on the, the, the playoffs by goal difference, which is a little bit concerning because I feel like we really deserve to be in the playoffs at this moment in time. Anyway, that final game of the season is in a week's time. We're going to jump forward to that. I'm going to go and praise Levi, get the lads fired up for the last game of the year. Can we secure what would be, let's be honest, an absolutely incredible playoff spot? Let's go find out. Just as I was getting ready to play the next game, I was looking over the past position table. It's absolutely bonkers to look at. It's hard to believe that kind of, I don't know, 10, 11 games into the season, we were down in the relegation zone. It's kind of crazy the difference that having... The worst goalkeeper in the league versus the best goalkeeper in the league makes. Of course, if you've been watching videos on the channel, you might have seen the video where we gave China like the perfect goalkeeper. That goalkeeper was able to make quite a big difference. I didn't really think it would translate quite to the same extent it has at this level. But you know what? We're a team that create a lot defensively when perhaps not the best. But having just a keeper that we can rely on has obviously made a monumental difference. And suddenly we find ourselves in a position here where a draw against Eastbourne Town should be enough to get us top five. Um, of course, I say all of this, I don't want to big us up too much and big up this season because frankly, if we were to finish sixth now, it would feel like a little bit of a failure, wouldn't it? Um, just looking at the other games that we need to be aware of, Hearn Bay are taking on Beckenham Town. Beckenham Town, uh, by the way, are not the best of teams. They are playing for their lives down at the bottom of the table where, well, one of four teams is going to stay up this season. So Beckenham are really going to want to win that one. Elsewhere, Sheppey United are taking on Ashford United, who are in 10th. Realistically, they are both games that those teams are going to expect to win. So going against Eastbourne here, 
We need a draw. That's all that we need. A draw keeps us in the top four. Uh, well, the four playoff spots, the top five, I suppose, technically. That's really what we've got to aim for at this moment in time. So when it comes to team selection for today's game, one change enforced. Unfortunately, Gayla picked up a knock in the previous game. I was hoping I might be able to have him on the bench for this one, but... To be honest, he's not fit, so I'm just going to bring in uh, Derling just to give us another option at centre mid. I would say now that attacking centre mid area is perhaps the one area where we do lack a little bit of strength in depth. Of course, it wasn't a position that I thought we were going to be using at the start of the year. We have got Gabriel Isaac. He is going to step up in this position. Um, this man has had a little bit of interest in him from a few different teams. I've set an asking price of £40,000 on him. He is going to be playing as our centre attacking mid. He's played a lot this year. He's not been amazing this year. This would be quite a good moment for him to really show up. The rest of the team, though, remains unchanged from the previous match. I just want to get into this. I just want to get an early goal and then hopefully be able to enjoy this end of season. And uh, we'll hopefully be in the playoffs at the end of things. If we don't make it to the playoffs, I will be so gutted. I will be so, so gutted. It will feel like we've not really made any progress this year if we bottle things again at the end of the year. But of course, we had a memorable end to last year. This one could be memorable for a number of different reasons. Let's hope that we can get the result that I think we desire and we probably deserve here, given our seasonal performance. We have got an early highlight. Of course, Eastbourne Town, just as a reminder, they may need a point themselves to stay up and, uh, well, stay up in the playoff spots. And we've had a shot from range there that's been saved well. Four minutes in, we look like we have a little bit of attacking intent. We are, of course, without our normal corner taker. So, yeah, we have lost the, the set-piece specialist, which is not really ideal for a game like this because we like our set-pieces. And while speaking of set pieces, they've got one here. Harrison, sh short, hit from range, hit over. We're fine. But, I mean, I don't like the fact they're having shots at all. But I suppose if they're going to have shots from anywhere, there is fine. Another highlight here for Eastbourne Town, of course. They have their overlapping fullbacks. They're going to get space in the wide area. And while speaking of that space, Atwood is in it. Whips in. It's headed away by Barrel, but only as far as Harrison, who has plenty of options in the middle to try and pick out. We're going to need to do some defending here. Labby has loads of space to whip in the ball. It wasn't a great ball into the box. The effort hits the crossbar, and we just about get it away from danger. Half an hour gone here. Both teams with three shots each, but they've got a corner that we're going to have to deal with. And well, we've dealt with the initial effort. We might have more to deal with, though, because it's Harrison to a Bengo. Now with Chalwell for them. Pressure at the edge of the box is not really what I want to see, but that clearance will do us. Just a little bit of a, a release valve, perhaps, pulled there for just a moment. We... Have the pressure alleviated, but it looks like Eastbourne Town are going to come back at us again. Of course, as the home side, I expect them to be a team wanting to attack and wanting to really push in this game. And the early signs are that they're not afraid to have a go against us, as Virgo is going to be threaded through superbly, and Edwards just doing Edwards things. What a save, my son. We need more like that today, I feel like. That was a huge stop. Still a corner to deal with. And we're going to get it away from danger and live to fight another day. Or are we? Harrison whips in Atwood, headed at Edwards, we're fine. Breathe a sigh of relief. Ten minutes to half time. Get me in at the break at nil-nil and I'll be fine. So just looking at the state of play right now, um, in terms of the games that we need to care about, uh, where are they? Hearn Bay are still drawing nil-nil. So that is a really good result for us. Sheppey United are winning 2-1, of course. If Hearn Bay and Sheppey United win and we lose, we're outside the playoffs. So, I mean, it feels like we're going to need to do a little bit of something here. And to be honest... We've not been very good in this game thus far, to the point where I'm now being told that Isaac should be taken off because he's got a damaged foot. And also, he's on a 6.3. I'm taking him off. I've had enough. And you know what? Bit of a curveball. Brandon O'Neill, you can technically play centre attack in mid. That is where you're coming on to play for us today. A man who was a, a regular member of the central midfield, got a lot of goals for us earlier on in the year. As the season's gone on and we found our groove, he has slipped down the pecking order. But I feel like he's a player I can rely on on occasions like this. And, well, we could have a chance here, and we are going to have a chance. It's Kyle Barnett with the goal. Braithwaite with an assist from right back. Didn't have an assist before today. He's got two in two games. And with 24 minutes left, we take the lead, somewhat against the run of play. And it all came from a throw-in, which is an unlikely source of a goal, I feel like. The ball put into the near post. Barnett headed it across, squeezed it in, it, in off the post. I really need to get Barnett that deal, don't I, and sign him permanently. I really need to do it. His goals have been vital for us with his 14 jumping reach. And, well, he's there to win the ball in the air once more. Can we now go on the attack? Dowdy, not going to be able to get to that one. Werby doing the, the sweeping, keeping job. 
for them. But we're, get, we're going to look to build from the back once more. We'll have another go at them. O'Neill now playing as that centre attacking mid. Gallimore threaded through by Jones. Can he finish this? Yes, he can. 2-0. We were poor in the first half. We've come out in the second half strong. We've made it 2-0. That is us in the playoffs. I'm calling it now. We're not conceding free. I know it happened earlier on in the year. We didn't have Edwards in the goal then. And it's such a good ball by Jones, the young Welshman. And they're finished. Not too bad either. Keeping questionable. I'm not going to complain. We're two goals up. I'm feeling good. And apparently it was a tight offside. Was it tight? I mean, if that's a tight offside, I'm good at football manager. And uh, I'll let you be the judge if it was a tight offside or not. Bond on this near side, Atwood. I mean, if they want to get into this game, East Bond, they have to get a goal almost immediately, you'd imagine. If I'm not mistaken, as things stand, if the results went the way that I was fearing they could go, East Bond Town would actually miss out on the playoffs by one point. They need something here. Braithwaite won the ball there and has been given a red card for no Sorry, what was that? What was that? Was never a red. Can we all agree that was never a red? I've, I feel like he won the ball. So a little bit of a change-up required. We're going to have to play Theo Jones at right-back, a man who I brought in as an emergency option at centre-back. But because he can play right-back, I've had him on the bench in case a day like this came. A day like this has come, Theo. You're making your debut. It's the last game of the season. I'm going to stick, I think, with the overall strategy just without a centre attack in mid. And uh, hope that we can see out the remaining 15 minutes of this game down a man. I don't think that was a red card. I don't think it was a second yellow. My opinion doesn't matter though. They've now got a resulting free kick and they've headed it just over the bar. I want to time waste, but that has never worked here at Free Bridges. They've now got a chance. It's whipped in back post. Atwood scores for them. And I can't believe this. I actually, you know what? I need to change stuff. O'Neill, just go to ball winning midfielder on support. Thompson. Ball winning midfielder on support. The fullbacks just play on defend. Don't look for the overlaps anymore. Shorter passing. Let's try and keep hold of the ball. Time waste frequently. We've got eight minutes to see out here and I am nervous. Elsewhere, how are the other games going? It looks like Hearn Bay are not winning on the last day. It looks like Beckenham might even be winning against them. So even if we did bottle it, it might not even matter. It doesn't matter anyway because we've won the game 2-1. I don't think we deserved it on the overall balance of play. That was a mental red card. I don't think it ever was a red card. But you know what? We've seen them off. Nobody gave us a chance. An away from home win against one of our direct playoff rivals. And that is going to secure us, ladies and gentlemen, a playoff semi-final spot. Those are not words I thought I'd be uttering a few games into the year. But here we are. We end up finishing third in the league. In fact, we only finished behind the team in second on goal difference. That is a crazy turnaround. And we're going to be taking on Sheppey United, I'd assume, in the playoffs, whenever that is scheduled for. When is that going to be scheduled for? Oh, we get £1,000 for finishing third. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't really help the finances, but £1,000, it sounds like a lot of money. It's a bit of a drop in the ocean in reality. And we do have confirmation that we are going to be taking on Sheppey United at home in the semi-final, which I think us being at home is very, very big. We will then take on the winner of Sittingbourne the Eastbourne, of course, we just played Eastbourne and beat them. So I wouldn't mind playing them yet again. Uh, Sheppey United, we drew against towards the end of the year. Their end of season form, if I'm not mistaken, has been quite good. I say that. It's not great. They've lost two of their last four. Yeah, you know what? I back I back us to beat them tomorrow. I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling confident. We are going to be without Braithwaite. Wow, oh wow, oh wow. Tomorrow is going to be huge. We have the playoff semi-finals. As I mentioned, the semi-final and final are single-legged games. So tomorrow, we're just going to do all of the playoffs and have a bit of an end-of-season recap. It's been a crazy season. I hope we can have the craziest end to it. If there's anything that you'd like me to cover in the end-of-season episode that we've not covered over the course this year, maybe to do with my contract, the setup of the club and stuff. I feel like there's probably little bits that you guys would like to see, like the dynamics, for example, that I've not covered. Let me know any bits that you feel like you've been missing out on down in the comments. I will endeavour to cover them when we do the end of season wrap up bit tomorrow. I need to calm down. I need to remember to breathe. We've got a huge episode tomorrow, perhaps the biggest episode of Park to Prem so far. I hope to see you guys for it. And well, until then, it is me, Jack. I'm going to go lay down. I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.